faithful Catholics have successfully sabotaged Rome's Pride Parade. Bringing us this good news, Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, kudos to pro-family Catholics out there. How did they put an end to LGBT pride parades in Rome this year? Uh, Brian, it's not just LGBT, but in Rome, we have expanded the alphabet. It's LGBT, K, Q, I, K, and the Q stands for queer, the I stands for intersex, but believe it or not, the K stands for kinky. And the uh, Rome Pride Parade Manifesto says, we want the kinky in with the bondage, uh, sadomasochism thing, because sexuality has got to be a revolutionary. Well, Jules, these pride parades, you know, are not only sexually explicit, but oftentimes they have a blasphemous element to them as well. Who exactly did what to scuttle this year's march? Well, uh, you're talking about blasphemy, uh, Brad, and a couple of years ago, it was a very, very blatant uh, a couple of men uh, dressed as uh, in figures of a homosexual Jesus with the crown of thorns, the cross, and uh, uh, wrapped in a gay, you know, a rainbow flag. And that really provoked the anger of faithful Catholics. Uh, somebody even dressed up as Pope Francis. It was that blasphemous. And there's a small group called Pro Vita e Familia, Pro Life and the Family. And these plucky, courageous pro-lifers have dared to complain to uh, the government because uh, the province of, uh, not the province, the region of Lazio, under which Rome comes, was sponsoring this event. And uh, Pro Vita complained and said, how can you sponsor this event? when the organizers are so clearly in their manifesto defying Italian law, which prohibits a surrogacy, the renting of a female uterus. How can you do this? And when that complaint hit uh, Francesco Rocca, who is the president of the Lazio region, he pulled out uh, the sponsorship of the event. Again, that's caused a huge outcry. But Francesco Rocca is a Catholic. He volunteered with the Jesuits, with Caritas, and he was the president of the Italian Red Cross Society. Yeah, you've, you've been reporting there, Jules, in our Rome dispatches on that pushback against gay surrogacy. Uh, did the lay pro-life group receive any support at all from the hierarchy or the Vatican? Uh, sadly, it did not. Uh, there are many, many large and powerful Catholic groups in Italy, uh, charities, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, they talk about migrants, they talk about the environment, uh, they talk about the poor, but nobody really takes a stand against the sort of blasphemous events that take place in Rome every year. Uh, uh, interestingly, these uh, big groups are hugely influential. And remember, uh, thousands of people will be taking part in this Pride Parade, so-called Pride Parade, uh, and nearly 80% of them will undoubtedly be baptized and confirmed Catholics, because culturally, culturally Italy, Italy is still very much a Catholic country. You know, you hit on several points there. The fact that they would, uh, the Vatican and, and, and the hierarchy are so uh, ready to stand up for the climate change and all this. Uh, but then all these 80% of these Catholics out there being led astray by these marches. But also, Jules, you were saying, just to clarify, the march is still going on. It's just not receiving any state sponsorship. Absolutely. The march is going on. Uh, the, the sponsorship and the support has been withdrawn. Uh, 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 Rocca did tell the organizers, gave them a second chance, saying that if you apologize and withdraw this manifesto that calls for a demand on, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, surrogacy, uh, we might con reconsider, but the organizers very defiantly turned down his request. You know, and to me too, that seems like such a, a dark element to all that, to bring children 
uh, newborn life into those type of uh, family or not non-families. It seems so scandalous also, uh, Jules, that Rome itself has an LGBT pride march uh, and, and the church is not, you know, located right there in Rome. The Vatican City State has done next to nothing to encounter the event. Your, your take on that? Uh, that is true. They have been totally silent on, uh, you know, these marches. Remember, the march uh, will be passing many, many, many Spanish churches uh, and eating and drinking and merrymaking outside all these churches where, of course, in each church uh, there will be the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, and uh, many of these churches will be open. People will be walking in and out of these churches, uh, misbehaving uh, at times. But it's very sad that almost no priest will dare to preach a sermon against this from his pulpit or the Bishop of Rome, of course, the Holy Father, but his administrator, uh, his uh, vicar, uh, Cardinal Angelo Donatis, never ever say anything against this. Okay, uh, so Jules, if the church is so silent, all of her leaders there are so silent uh, against this LGBT uh, parade and the marches and the whole agenda, why has the Vatican and the Catholic Church been the target of hostility from the pride marches? Now, that's a very good question, Brad, because uh, in um, uh, when the Zahn bill was being passed by Parliament in October 2021, uh, the bishops at that time did put pressure on uh, um, Catholic members of Parliament. Uh, the Vatican itself, uh, you know, uh, used its diplomatic machinery to uh, pressurize the Italian government. And that bill was shot down in Parliament. The Zahn bill was going to codify into law uh, uh, legislation against what they call trans homophobia. And the bishops clearly said that this is going to lead to, uh, you know, uh, a totalitarian uh, move where people will not, ex Catholic schools will not even be able to teach Catholic morality any longer. And that caused a huge uproar among the LGBTQI activists. And that is one reason, incidentally, there were so many incidents of blasphemy in a previous Pride March uh, because of the Zahn bill being torpedoed. Uh, Jules, has the LGBT lobby become even more hostile now that uh, the Maloney government has taken over? Because, you know, Maloney, she was so out, uh, outspoken against the, the, uh, the uh, LGBT surrogacy? Uh, absolutely, Brad, because uh, Meloni has not only her platform for uh, the election was very clearly family, faith and fatherland. Uh, Meloni is also anti-abortion. And interestingly enough, the, in the uh, Rome Pride 2023 manifesto, uh, the organizers have talked about solidarity with, uh, uh, you know, American women after uh, <laughs> the Supreme Court uh, overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, so they've called the Maloney government uh, a, a government that is, uh, you know, fascist, uh, the, the, the usual thing, uh, the government that has declared war on rainbow families, uh, a government that has, you know, is depriving us of medically assisted procreation. But in April, something very significant took place. The Chamber of Deputies in Italy, which is the lower house of parliament, passed a law criminalizing what it called procreative tourism. Now, remember, in 2004, Italy banned surrogacy, but gay couples would still go abroad and, you know, get uh, the, the, the whole procedure done and bring their children and come back to Italy and the Italian government didn't know what to do. But under Melanie, uh, this uh, procedure has been banned and procreative tourism can no longer take place. And that is why the LGBT community is even more outraged. Well, congratulations to the pro-life and pro-family Catholics out there for standing up against this these strong forces out to destroy the family, which God himself has designed. 
and uh, just wish we could get more help from those who wear miters. Thanks, Jules, for bringing us this good news story to light. Thank you, Brad.